football clubs are full of stories. Tales of greatness and of triumph, of joy and sometimes heartbreak. But there are stories and then there are legends. Thanks to McCafe, we will talk to some of the Geelong Football Club's greatest players and hear some of their greatest stories. Welcome to Legends of Cadinia Park. Hello and welcome to Legends of Cadinia Park. It is great to have you with us again for another episode of this. Big thanks to our friends at McCafe, celebrating 30 years of sideline cheers and coffee that is well and truly fit for an Aussie. Now this is a new member exclusive experience where we talk to some of the greats of the Geelong Footy Club, dig into their careers and hear some of their best stories about their time here at the Cats. I want to get stuck into this one because I know this man right next to me is an absolute fan favourite, a true legend of Cadinia Park, Peter Riccardi. Rico, great to see you. You too, Lingy. We got to spend some time together playing together, the start of my career, the end of your career, but I'm pretty excited to uh, look back on your entire time within your footy yeah. experience. Yeah, I think we had about seven years together. Yes. It wasn't that much of an end of your, uh, start no, of yours. No, it wasn't, was it? No. What were you, 99, 2000? Yeah. 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 So that was yeah, right in the middle of mine and yeah, 2006 I finished up and ladies went after that, three, <laughs> three out of the next four. You, you taught us everything that we knew though, Rick. Well, I, I take that. <laughs> <laughs> Go all the way back to the start of your career though. So Corriah Little League. Yep. To Bannockburn. Yep. To West Saints. Yep. To the Cats. Yep, that's right. So as a six-year-old, we were able to play footy at six. Um, we played, I think it was under seven or under eight footy um, at a cry Little League. I think I debuted for, which was the Melbourne Demons. And then I crossed over <laughs> to the rival Hawks and played for the Hawks for a little bit up until we moved out to Bannockburn. And uh, yeah, under 14s, under 16s, won a premiership with the under 16s. Probably my one and only premiership as a player until I coached them you know, in uh, yes, a couple of years of ago. So, so I won two premierships, both with Bannockburn. So, and uh, yeah, then moved to, to Bannockburn where we wanted to play GFL so we can get, you know, um, play better footy because at that time it was divisions. Yep. Um, it was GFL, BFL and, and GDFL. And, but it was one, two, three, there was no Colts. So if you wanted to play good footy, you had to go play GFL. So went to West because I had a few mates there from uh, Chanel College where I went to school. And um, yeah, after that, um, Played a school game of footy and Stephen Wells was the, was the umpire. Oh, was he? Uh, yes. And uh, invited me down to the under-19s and yeah, from then, yeah, here to the Cats. Uh, am I right in saying you then trained with the under-19s um, in about 1989? Yep. Am yep. I right? Yeah. Yep. Didn't get a game that year, but obviously probably saw what was an incredible group of players in the seniors. They make the grand final in 89. Yep. Can you remember those early experiences for you but also looking at that group and the incredible feeling of a few years later you're going to play in a grand final with some of those people yeah well it was interesting because we get there and you know michael mansfield was there i think mark neil was there andrew wills um and so on and um yeah you walk in you, you know halfway through the year i'm thinking how am i gonna get a game here you know, they're flying the under 19s like like you said 89 it was we, we played in the under-19s reserves and seniors grand finals. And, and am I right in remembering that all three of those were decided by, by a goal less or Less than under? a goal, yeah. yep, 100%. <laughs> um, it was amazing, it was an amazing, amazing day. Um, unfortunately, we were on the wrong side of things, yes. but I mean, that's footy, I suppose. Um, but yeah, walked in and, you know, and then, you know, three, three years later, I think it was, I was, you know, 92, you know, you put on the list. You were out there. The 89, just quickly on the yep. 89 grand final, you did, you, you played, as you said, we had under-19s reserve seniors. Yep. They all lose by a goal yep. or, or under. Did you hang around for the senior game and watch the senior game? Yeah, I watched all three. Yeah. watched all three. And, and, um, but I was off my own back. So we didn't get a ticket or anything. But, you know, we loved the Cats. And loved the Cats when growing up. And, you know, as a kid, you always just wanted to play for them. So while I was there and knew a few people... Um, yeah, went along and, and watched all three. One, one player who did okay for the Cats on that day in the seniors, Gary Abbott Senior, Norm Smith medal, nine goals. Yep. Um, I think I've heard you recall before in your under 19 early days, in a warm up, you found yourself doing a bit of a warm up kick to kick with Gary Senior. Yes. What was that like? Did he just have an aura around him at that stage? Yeah, he did. And it was, um, it was 
wasn't until 91, so 1990 I played the whole year on the 19s, and then 91 still on the 19s, but played um, in the reserves the whole year. So you get called up and you're, you know, you're having a kick. Oh, sorry, I, it was in 1990 where I got called up to have a game in the, in the reserves. And um, we're doing a bit of lane work, and you, know, you kick the footy, and then Gaz has come out and kicked the footy to me and almost knocked me over, he kicked it that hard. <laughs> I, was, I was like, oh my Lord. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it was just a, an eye-opening experience, and you know, when you're out there gracing the turf of um, you know guys like Ablett, Bairstow, Hocking, Couch, Brownless, Stoneham. That was in 1990. I'm a 17-year-old thinking, oh my lord, how good is this? <laughs> all right, so all I can remember of you, Rico, is just on that beautiful left foot of yours, lace out every single time. I imagine when you're a 17-year-old, you haven't quite fully honed your kicking, there would have been a fair bit of pressure to hit them absolutely on the chest. You're not wrong, the nerves, like you, you walk in the rooms and obviously it's a bit different now. Um, you walk in and you go, oh my Lord, I don't, I don't belong here. I don't belong here. But um, after you get your first two kicks away, you know, it's, everything's just normal. You very quickly proved that you did belong there. 288 games throughout your career. Um, as you said, 1992. We've got to go there, unfortunately. Yep. Um, it was, again, a remarkable year and a really quality team and uh, playing against a powerful West Coast team. Up in that grand final and then West Coast come over the top. You yep. played in other grand finals after that that perhaps the result was yep. done and dusted. Was that still the one that, that irks you a little bit? Yeah, for, for us, 92 was the one. And I think the turning point just come before half time. I reckon they kicked two just before half time to get, give them a sniff. And we're still, I think, two and a half, three goals up at that stage going to half time. But then after that, Matera on the wing dominated. They just, you know, kind of like went the middle, middle forward, middle forward. I think they ended up winning by, you know, four or five goals. So it was, it was a massive turnaround for them. But I thought if we could have held them, just before half time, you know, we had momentum. Uh, you mentioned Peter Matera, and I remember that day well, sitting yeah. in, the, in the crowd there as an 11 year old kid. Post that grand final, you and Peter Matera, I've got some great memories yep. of you matching up on him. So still, still this is still the, um, the, skinnier ver the skinny arm version of uh, yep. Peter Riccardi, yep. uh, running up and down on the wing against Peter Matera, you, I think he used to wear the bike shorts underneath, yeah. the, the yep. shorts and all that. Yep. You had some great battles against him after that 92 grand final, didn't you? Yeah, thank God I didn't play him in that 92 grand final. <laughs> um, otherwise, you probably would never see me again. You know, as a, as a 19 year old kid playing in his first grand final and um, yeah, he wins, the, he wins the Norm Smith medal. But I did learn a lot because I played on him um, in the second semi and um, I learned a lot as a young fella um, not to get goal side too quick on him because if the ball gets turned over, he's out and you'll, you'll never catch him. So um, so after that, yeah, I just I learned to be goal side, but then take your chances when it come, when it's forward to centre for you, because he didn't defend very well. Let's be honest, we never did. <laughs> <laughs> when, you're kicking, when you're kicking 20, 25 goals a week, who yeah. defended? Yeah. Um, but um, as history shows, the best defensive side wins grand finals. Um, but Malcolm Blight did encourage a very attacking oh, team, didn't oh, he? Oh, 100%, yeah. He's, I think his motto was, you know, if they kick 20 and we kick 21, we win the game of footy. Um, and the majority of the time we did. Uh, we would have had a high percentage of win ratio to loss, um, which was nice, but obviously yeah, when it comes to the crunch, um, we just couldn't get over the line. I probably should have done my homework on this one, but were you playing in the game where Geelong broke the record score, yep. the 239 points yep. against Brisbane? Yep, up a car. <laughs> so was that just all out of tack? That's well, crazy. Isn't it amazing though? Like we've kicked 37 goals, but Brisbane, I think, kicked 11 or 12 goals. So there's almost 50 goals kicked in a game of footy. Um, you see that, like, I was, I was reading an article the other day, um, Gavin Exel. Was, I think it was in the Geelong history thing. Gavin Exel kicked nine goals yes. at Princess Park against Hawthorne, and Geelong kicked 167 points and still lost the game of footy. This is amazing, isn't it? Um, but yes, um, yeah, Paul Brown got amongst it. Gaza, obviously, Billy kicked the winning point. Um, <laughs> I was lucky enough to get on into three. So um, from the wing, I think we only had two or three um, players that didn't kick goals that day. Get to push up the ground a little bit more, a bit, <laughs> bit more aggressive. Um, 92, as you said, perhaps that one that missed as a supporter and I was a crazy cat supporter yeah. growing up cheered for you many many times almost felt like 93 in a different way 
was the best team and the best chance where West Coast had perhaps just dropped off after their premiership year. Yep. You guys from memory go on and win the last five games of the year, but don't make finals. Yeah, I think we played the, the six finalists. Yes. At the last six rounds and we bet them the whole, might have been five or six, yeah. And, and we bet, bet them going through. But earlier in the year, we, were, um, we had a lot of injuries. Um, so all, when we got the personnel back, um, we were flying. And um, we played West Coast that last, last round over at the WACA. In Perth, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, and that's where Malcolm yes. White runs out yes. and piles in on top. Yeah. Yeah. So we win that game. We're in the six, because it wasn't the six. So they dropped it back from the eight to the six. And then I think they went back to the eight either a year after all. Anyway, um, so we had to rely on Collingwood beating Adelaide that's at right. Football Park. And I remember we were all at um, Warm Ponds Hotel. So we all come together at the Warm Ponds Hotel. And at the start of the game, Colin were eight goals up a quarter time, six to eight goals up a quarter time. And we're sipping the lemonades and, and having Cokes. And by well, three quarter times, so they're like eight goals down, and out come the pots, and <laughs> <laughs> our season was done. Oh, yeah, that felt like one. That yeah, was but a huge yeah, that was, if we hadn't made it, I reckon we would have you know, uh, pushed very hard to win that. That and that was the season that Gary Senior was finally moved permanently to full forward, forward and yep. kicked his first turn yep. and um, felt like it was all coming together nicely. Do you want me to even touch on 94 and 95 or just skip uh, over those? We'll skip over those. Like, I mean, West Coast and Carlton were the best sides in it, um, especially Carlton in 95. I think they got beaten once for the year. Yeah. Um, Can I ask you then about 94 final series? Let's, let's leave the grand final. Right, yep. But you beat the Bulldogs with a kick uh, after the sign with Billy. Yep. You beat Carlton uh, with, I think, Hocking, best on couch, couch all out. out. Yep. And then you beat North Melbourne with the Gary Ablett senior kick up, the siren yeah. with the poor Mick Martin on yes. the grand crush. Yeah. Up until the grand final, it was the most remarkable final series. It was. We were obviously lucky in that against the Bulldogs. Um, we were fantastic. And it wasn't, it wasn't the older boy. I wouldn't say me being older, being my second year in or third year in. Um, we had Lordy come in. He dominated with 30 and it was stiff to get dropped the next week. Yes, so, Aaron Law, that's yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, Pickers um, played in the midfield. Like, it was just a, a makeshift midfield. And um, yeah, got the job done and got a jump pretty comfortably in the end. Um, and then the North Melbourne one, it was, it was amazing. That was the, that was the, the day where Malcolm Blight grabbed me by the scruff of the neck. At, and, at the break, was that yeah, quarter, quarter time? time. That's yeah. right. Scruff of the neck. So from then on in, I knew, I was always front and centre. And always front and side after that, so I wasn't in. A, <laughs> so I wasn't in eyesight. I've been, um, but yeah, I caught my whack because um, there was one time where I didn't run through the footy, and he kind of just said like, you know, you know what we're playing for here. Um, and really, after that, I got going as well. Um, I think I played one of my better games after that. And it was almost North Melbourne on their rise, wasn't it? With Wayne yeah. Carey, I think yep. six it's enough all, yep. and they were about to head through their. Dynasty of preliminary finals and grand finals. But the ebb and flow in that, pre, in that prelim was, was amazing. You know, they got off to a flyer. They were, I think they were six goals up a quarter time. Then we peaked them back and we were up, I reckon, by a couple of goals. Then it was just an arm wrestle from, from then on in. And, you know, they hit the front. And for some reason, I remember, I remember it vividly. I've seen it a few times, but I can just... I think it was... It was Archer that kicked the footy in and Barnsley takes a mark in the goal square and... In opposite, and, and, and gives a handball on. to Bairstow yes. straight away. Yes. <laughs> like, plays on straight away and Bairstow just dump kicks it and it ends up in my hand. And I run and take three bounces up the That's wing. Right. I see Billy coming out, went to lace him out. Ross Smith intercepts. It was just for a minute and a half, two minutes, it was just like mayhem. Until that magnificent floating yeah. Lee Tudor yep. ball just drifts yes. across <laughs> to Gary Senior's hand. But even what before a that, was it... Was it Lee Colbert or was it Barnsley that dropped that? No, nah, Lee Colbert, I think yeah. it went straight through his hands, was yeah, it? Yeah, or... dropped that soda. Yes. To um, and then yeah, um, Lee Tree did lurk of these, um, picked it up and don't, don't even know what kind of kick it was, but it just landed right. I just floated over Mick Martin and, and Jazz of hands. I've still got tingles thinking about that. That yeah. was uh, unbelievable being there. Yeah. We just got to wish that was the grand final. Yeah, would have been nice. Yes. Buy any eligible coffee on the My Maccas app and you could win free barista made coffee for a year. 25 winners every day ends August 29. T's and C's apply. Unfortunately, the next week doesn't work out. And as you said, 95 against an all-powerful Carlton team. Um, I, I'm keen to talk about um, what, I don't know, I, I assume you call this your, your best year. 
your Kaji Greaves medal winning year in 1998. Yep. So you, am I right in saying off the back of perhaps 96, 97 that coaches challenged you? There was maybe a little bit of chatter about yep. trading potentially yep. and things like that. Yep. Can you tell, talk us through that period and how you had to then grit your teeth and take your game to a new level? So 96, 96 I, um, I had a good year. Um, made the state team. Um, so that was okay. But then 97, I broke my ribs early, but knew, no one knew. Okay. And they probably still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I kept playing until about round 15 when, you know, just I took a couple of weeks off. Um, they recovered, come back out in 97. Um, I had 42 touches out here against Port Adelaide, kicked three goals. Still only got two Brownlow votes, I still can't remember. <laughs> Round so 18, 1997. I, I still one. can't believe. I got, anyway, <laughs> Stephen King got three votes. I don't know how that happened. Um, but, yeah, but after that, that 97, we had a chat with, I had a chat with Easy, and um, I think Richmond were interested. And, um, and he goes, and he, and he asked me about it. You know, I said, look, I don't want to go, but if you don't want me, well, I'm, I'm happy to go. Um, so um, it kind of it kind of like gives you a kick in, kick in the butt, saying, "Right, you know, you've got to get your ass into gear, really." And um, so I trained really well. Had a good, really really good preseason. Ninety seven led into ninety eight, and um, yeah, so I had a good year. Ninety eight. I thought ninety nine was probably a better year, but so did other other people had good years as well. So um, I think they come second in the card in, in that year as well, and. Um, yeah, so that I mean, '98 was was, was a, a good year for me personally, but probably not for the club. You know, '98, '99, well, obviously, a few retirements, um, and then obviously you blokes all come in and well, Bomber I, come in after that. Yeah, can I take you to that period? So '99 was a pretty crazy year for the club. Yep. Uh, I think Brian Cook had just started the club as a CEO. Yep. Gary Ayres leaves, yep. um, but so does the captain, Lee yes. Colbert. Yep. And this new bloke comes in, um, a great of Essendon, um, yep. premiership captain, three-time premiership player, Mark Bomber-Thompson, takes over as coach. Clearly with a philosophy of, I'm going to draft yep. and develop young players and, yep. and hopefully build the next premiership team. What's your mindset like there? Are you, are you thinking, oh, geez, what, look out, or... I'm, I'm on board and I'm going to be part of this journey and this, and we're all going to do it with these young players yep. together. Nah, we, me and Bomber had a conversation real early. So he came over and um, we had a good conversation at home had a f- over a few beers um, and wanted me and told me, you know, I'm a big part of it. You know, once you're captain, vice captain, um, however, however it works. So, and then two years, so 2000, 2001, you know, vice captain with, with Benny. Um, I think we were the two, um, along with Sholey as well, that um, pretty much stayed on and um, wanted us to lead this young group, um, which was, you know, we were all four. And um, he was really invested when, he, when we had that conversation and really wanted to let us know that, you know, we're going to go in a different direction. One of the teachers all had to defend, and even myself, because I wasn't that type of player. Um, still wanted us to be offensive, but also have a defensive mindset as well. And as you know, Bomber being a, a defender yep. and um, going through, obviously with Dennis Pagan, um, obviously knew how to attack, obviously Pagan's paddock and all that kind of stuff. Um, he was really good and really, really firm in the way he wanted us to go about it. And, and just to make sure myself that, you know, you're not going anywhere. The, I know, and this is from me speaking, but also so many of my generation, as in the ones who yep. were my draft, yep. or that draft a year or two later, so Kelly and Johnson and yep. Chapman and Joel Corey and Enright and some of those players, look back and are so thankful for the likes of yourself and Brenton Sanderson yep. and Stephen King. Oh, King played in a premiership ultimately, yep. but yep. that you guys seeing us through that period and teaching us so much. I mean, even Tim McGrath and Brad Scholl and yes. these guys in yep. the really early years um, who are at the back end of their careers. What did you think of us as a bunch of <laughs> young punks? That, that draft, those couple of drafts brought in, you know, nine, 10, 11 yep. kids who ultimately played in premierships. Yeah. What were your first impressions of us? No, no, I just, it was funny. Like, it's, it's, it's amazing the transition because 
I still, I was only like midway through my career yeah. when, when new blokes come on board. So, you know, although I was probably um, experienced in games played, but I wasn't really experienced in leadership because um, I didn't really have to, to do it because we had the likes of, you know, even Hocking was still there, um, you know, Bearstow, Couch, you know, they're transitioning out and then all of a sudden you think, shit, you know, it's actually my turn now to, to step up, you know, with Sando and, and Benny Graham. And, and, and they were awesome. We were, and um, you kids probably generated us, like give us a little bit of life as well because... We'll go. We'll stagnate. I thought in '98, '99, and then you you blokes come on board, um, and we played. Fo- we played finals. Finals yes. in 2000. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Elimination finals. Yeah. In Hawthorne. Hawthorne. <laughs> yes. So, so you guys rejuvenated us and and um, gave us a bit of life, thinking, you know, we're back here, and and it does take a little bit because then we get a couple more. You know, 2001. 2001. No oh, yeah, no but didn't we? Didn't we? Draft instead of didn't draft. We um, trade picks and got some older blokes in. Yeah, Mitch White. Uh, Mitch White yeah. and and then two thousand two, you know, Ablett, uh, Johnson, Johnson Bartel, Bartel, Kelly. Yeah, all these and they were the next generation and um, obviously the rest is history after after that. So you know, two thousand two thousand four, two thousand five. You know, you know, even luck. We should beat Brisbane in two thousand four, um, two thousand five. You know. Obviously, Sydney, uh, in Sydney. Um, you know, we, don't, and that's, we, we don't need to show the highlight of the Nick <laughs> Davis goal, thank you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So all of a sudden, there's, you know, you rejuvenate us older blokes yeah. to, to start playing um, younger man's football. Yeah. Can I, you, you mentioned a young group and some of the perils of a young group are up and down performance. I want to take you to one game in particular in 2002. Uh, <laughs> Against Carlton, yep. we are up by uh, quite a bit at this uh, at three quarter time. I think we I think we led by about thirty eight points yes. early in the last quarter. Yep. Carlton then kicked the next six. The hell, as uh, as a young team like us want to do, we we're giving away free kicks. They yep. had a run on everything like that. Yep. Matt Matty Lappin kicks a goal for the Blues. Yep. Gives them the lead with 26 seconds to play. Yep. Then it comes to you. <laughs> You'd already kicked three that day. Yep. You take the mark, I think, from a wobbly David Clark Left foot kick. kick. Left foot, that's right. He, <laughs> yeah, uh, he can't he, kick on his right foot. <laughs> <laughs> you go back. I gotta, I've just got to ask it once and for all. Was it touched? A blistering final term from the Blues. They trailed a reminder by 37 points at three-quarter time. King and Hotton winning it down. Camparelli dispossessed. Corey Kilpatrick misses the body with the handball. Now Clark, short ball. Riccardi wow. has taken the mark inside the 50. It is in good hands. It is in good hands. The I'm siren gonna tell you. is going to sound, Gary. This shot on goal will be after the siren, oh. and he has to kick it for the Cats to win. There it is. I tell you what, has there been a more dramatic last quarter of footy? And goals scored after the siren have been invoked. I tell you, this is a massive kick. From lots of perspectives, I can't believe this last quarter, boys. Three it is in goals good hands. on the day for Peter Riccardi, one of the most skilled exponents of the set shot in the game. Let's watch the fate of the match riding on Peter Riccardi. It leaves the boot. It's swinging back. It's there. It's there. The Cats have stolen victory from the jaws of defeat at Colonial Stadium. What a to this day, I still don't know, but Simon Wiggins reckons he actually got three fingers to it. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's funny. So I carried a long way for it's, three fingers. That's, that's what I reckon too. But I do say to uh, the Carlton supporters, if they asked it, was it touch? I said, yep, it was. <laughs> but to be honest, I, I, I honestly don't know. Um, even talking to Mick Mansfield, because he was at Carlton then, and he reckons... Um, he, he was very adamant that he, he got a three fingers it to it. Was touched. Yeah, he was touched. Did you know that Bomber Thompson never watched the kick? He'd already left the box. Yeah, so he left. Um, I think Frank Costa and Brian Cook went downstairs. Well, after like, there was 26 seconds to go. We didn't know there was 26 seconds to go. Um, but they all went downstairs. And, um, 
And then they hear the Geelong theme song, what's going on? <laughs> they missed the kick. They missed the kick. Oh. So, but there would have been a few because if you're a Geelong supporter, like, well, like I said, we kicked the first goal after three quarter time. That's right. And, um, and yeah, and then all of a sudden they just get on a roll and, um, yeah. Footy's a funny game. We go in as happy as happy. If we'd lost after being that oh, much yeah. up, those rooms would have been yes. not, a, not oh, a good place to go. No, <laughs> no, you're not wrong. But there's some learnings out of that, um, as we probably remember. Can I go to um, you, you finishing up? Yep. 288 games. Am I right in saying that Bomber Thompson, end of 2005, perhaps talked you around, wanted to... Still, you could still contribute so much from your playing and certainly with your leadership that you did for so long. Yep. Um, but also wanted to try and get you to that 300 game mark. Yep. Body just didn't, didn't allow it in the end in 06. Yeah, so 2005, that Sydney game, I had to pull out um, before the game. Um, anyway, so we lose that. Um, then we have our exit meetings and I, I was going into that meeting thinking I'm done. Um, so I go in and Bomber goes, what do you reckon? And I said, I think I'm done. He said, body's just about had it, I think. Um, and he goes, look, at that, at that stage, I needed 18 games to, to reach 300. Um, he goes, we've only got two players at this club to reach that milestone um, and we'll get you through, we'll nurse you through. And um, he goes, go around, go, go home, talk to, your, to the wife, um, Anyway, and then you go and sleep on it and you think, it would be an amazing milestone, wouldn't it? So, um, so I thought, you know what? He goes, and not only that, he goes, don't come back till after Christmas. Um, which is probably the, was probably the worst thing I probably could have done. Like, I did come in um, once or twice a week, but I wasn't getting a, a full pre-season. So after, after Christmas, you, you're kind of playing catch up, yeah. right? But at that time, before round one, I'm thinking, I'm flying here. Yeah, feeling amazing. Feeling amazing um, until the last training session before before round one, and I do my hammy. So, so I do my hammy, and then uh, I, I think I've done it four times in that last year. In that last year. Yeah. Um, so the last game against St Kilda, um, my ever my, my last ever kick was a right foot, which no one no one believes me. So right foot coming out of the middle. And I was flying that day too. I reckon I had, I come on, I, I come on as an impact player. Yep. So I come on about the, you know, between the 10 and 15 minute mark of, of the first quarter and come on on ball and just try and make as big as impact as I can. And I reckon I was on for five minutes. I reckon I had five or six touches. Come out of the middle, stream out, kick on my right foot, done. So I think that's about round 18, do you say? Yep, yeah. I think that's right. Um, so Bomber comes down and he goes, is that it? I said, I'm done, mate. I'm, I'm cooked. <laughs> Two, 288 games, though, is yep. still incredible. And what I mean, to think of the number of people who get to play one game, yep. it's not many. Yep. Pete, I think it's 4% of those who are drafted play 100 games. Yep. But 288 games for the club from your hometown, yep. it's still remarkable. It is. Like, and, and you still pinch yourself. Like, I look back now, I'm, I'm so blessed because we were, we were, I was still in the zone. So, you know, if Geelong wanted me, I didn't have to go on a draft. Yep. Do you know what I mean? So, so Geelong automatically put me on their list, which was, you know, which I should do now, I reckon. Um, but anyway, it is what it is. But, you know, I was the last of that group. Um, and then all of a sudden now, everyone goes into a draft pool. So if, if, if Geelong didn't do it, you know, you go into a draft pool and you get drafted, obviously. Um, so, you know, we're... I was pretty blessed in, in that way because, you know, I remember coming here as a kid. There was no stand out there. I was on a milk crate over the far wing, um, you know, watching my favourite player scratch a kneel. Yeah. <laughs> um, Supporting the redheads, thanks, yeah. mate. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, number 35 on my back. Um, just loved coming every second week. It was, and it was a Saturday afternoon. Yeah. We never played night games or anything like that. Um, just loving the cats and, you know, a bit like yourself and then being lucky enough to come here. The, I've got to ask you, because you did straddle both their careers. You got to play with senior and yep. junior. I touched on senior a little bit. Um, oh, the, do I ask you who was better out of the two? They're so, both so different players, yeah. it's hard to answer. Yep. Maybe just your thoughts a little bit on both and maybe if you want to make the call, you can. Yeah, no, I think, 
I think Gary Jr. was the better all-round player. But bums on seats, you can't go past watching Gary Ablett Sr. Well, I, I played with Gaz for six or seven years, and uh, I'll get caught up watching him out in the footy field. You know, I was watching him from the stands, and then I was lucky enough to sit here and watch him you know, have front row seats, really, to, to his show. And then I didn't play with the best of junior, but I knew what he was capable of. Um, and just little snippets of when I was playing uh, over his, you know, five or six years that I played with him, um, it was it was a marvel. But he was more of the all-round player. Like, you know, if you're if Gaz is streaming out that way, senior, and you're streaming that way, there's no handball. <laughs> <laughs> there's a massive YouTube just, kicking over. Just your head. keep on running. <laughs> <laughs> Where Junior would just get it and not even think. Bang, he's out to you. Um, yeah. So I think all-round Junior's. You know, Junior's probably the better all-round player, but Gas Senior, you know, bumps on seats. You mentioned you turned into a spectator at times. Yep. You are now a full-time spectator, yep. getting to watch Oscar, your son. Yeah. Um, hopefully, um, by the time we're watching all this, may have played his first senior game, but right now is in that those early stages of his journey. It must yep. be so incredible having now watching Oscar take this journey that you took uh, so many years ago. Yeah, it's, it's eerily, eerily similar to my path as well, as in, um, we're talking, we're, so we go back at the start of my career, like, I was there in 89, but I didn't get a, a, an invitation to come to training in 1990. Okay. So I've got a, a friend of mine, um, he got an invitation, and that time he just, just came, come down with us, come down with us. So, you know, he convinced me to come down, so I'll come down and fortunate enough to, to, to stay, get on the list and play round one in 1990. Oscar, uh, a very late developer, uh, didn't get an invite to the Falcons uh, under 18s coach from Newtown, um, messaged Paul Corrigan about three kids to, um, you know, you've got to at least have a look at. And, um, you know, it was Oscar Murdoch, Oscar Riccardi and Archie Sinnott. So, and two of them now at the Cats, yeah. so Oscar and Oscar and Oscar. Um, but yeah, with, with my Oscar, um, he, he, he knows this is a development year for him. He, he's come to the club at 65 kilos, so he has to put a bit of weight on, which he's put on eight, so he's up to 73. Wow. So yeah. um, he's doing his best to do that. Um, they put a big block of training into him now. Um, so hopefully when he's, when he's back out there after the bye, that he's um, ready to go and he's going to so they're training him up to be the AFL winger. So they've been playing him as a, as a forward, as a high half forward, and now they're going to transition him into the wing. Um, so he, look, he knows, he knows, and he's a realist, that um, there's a lot of development to go into him. So he's kind of, he's taken this year to be that development. Um, and then hopefully, you know, next year onwards, he gets that um, opportunity. We, we, quick weight comparison when you first started compared to him. He was yep. 67. What were you? I was 78. Oh, yeah. got him coming but by I had, a mile. But I had six kilos with my hair. I've got, to, <laughs> I've, I've got to ask you about that one. So, just you running down that wing having a bounce and yep. that beautiful mullet yep. just bobbing away. Yep. Do you look back and just, what Wait, was well, I thinking? Or it'd be cool now. It'd be cool now. <laughs> yeah, it's all, it's all turning back. Um, yeah, no, it was, it was interesting. Like, when it was wet, it went down to the middle of my back. The curls, tight curls, it, you know, it come up a little bit. Um, but yeah, there was, there was a time where I had to cut it, and that was, believe it or not, 97. So maybe it was that, that time, you know, David and Goliath, you know, you cut your hair, and who was that? Samson, was it? Samson. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he got weaker, you got better. No, well, not that year. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Um, Rico, just to finish on, um, as, as you look back on your career, yep. um, just something that jumps off the page as you go, I am so glad I experienced that, or th that's what I miss most about my time at the Cats. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed because I played with some ripping players. I played, in my 90s, I played with Senior, Bairstow, Couch, Hocking, Bairstow, um, sorry, um, Brownless, Stoneham, and then... In the back end, yourself, Chapman, Corey Enright, Joel Corey, Junior, like you name Ch Chappie, like all these, uh, Scarlet, Milburn. I was that lucky to play with so many greats of, of our footy club. Um, 
and not many of us have. So I feel like that I, I was the I was the one that was blessed because I played with some some rippers, and you know it's it's a memory for life, obviously. And um, and now hopefully I get to see my sons live their dream. Let's hope so. Well, I'll tell you what we can say. We say that we were blessed to get to play with you too, Rico. Thank so you very much. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Lee. Cheers.